Hi, my name is David Rosales. I'm the pastor of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. Seeing that our presidential election is a few short days away, and also seeing that many have already cast their votes, I thought it would be good to share with those of you who have yet to vote. I normally stay away from political discussions, not because I have no concerns, but because I believe that if a Christian reads their Bible and attends a church that teaches the Bible, they should know how to discern between what is morally right and morally wrong, and then make their choice based on what they know. But sadly, after reading so many posts from professing Christians, my opinion on the condition of the church has been lowered tremendously. I recently read that 90 million Christians in America are, are eligible to vote, but as many as 40 million fail to vote in presidential election cycles, and 15 million Christians aren't even registered to vote. As salt and light, it's important for us to make our moral choices heard, but some Christians don't think their voices are essential, but they are. As I've considered the presidential candidates, I've seen great differences between the candidates and not just personality differences. I've seen that the president has revealed a love for our nation and has worked tirelessly to improve the lives of all of us. I've seen that he's appointed three justices to the Supreme Court and 216 federal judges. This is good because morality is often decided by what is legal. I've seen that Trump is pro-life and that he issued a pro-life statement to the United Nations affirming the dignity of all persons and pledged to veto any legislation that weakens current pro-life federal laws and policies or encourages the destruction of innocent human life at any stage, and that blesses me. In my lifetime, I haven't seen a president work so hard or so selflessly. He, don he donates his pay to charitable organizations and hasn't profited from his political position. As far as I can see, these are things worthy of supporting. But the sad thing is, many Christians are intending to or already have voted for someone who seems to be the opposite of what we need. There can be no doubt that for the last four years, the press has been actively opposing him. I read that 92% of all news on President Trump is negative. I've seen the press print stories based on hearsay or anonymous sources constantly, but I can't help but wonder why they haven't reported that his opponent's son, Hunter, they haven't reported on his laptop that was found with evidence that his father was involved in a money laundering scheme with foreign nations. This is one of the biggest news stories of our time. And the press outside of Fox News is refusing to cover it because they're promoting Biden for president. Plain and simple. Joe Biden has profited off the American people. He's made millions of dollars. He owns several houses while being paid $174,000 a year. And people don't even blink when they hear this. They just don't seem to care. Their hatred for Trump is so great. Any Christian who doesn't see this is wearing blinders or willingly refusing to believe it. This is not just wrong, it's sad. If there are any people still listening, let me share with you how I as a believer choose whom to vote for. I vote for the most pro-life candidate because God hates the shedding of innocent blood. I vote for the one who is pro-Israel because according to Zechariah chapter two, verse eight, Israel is the apple of God's eye. I vote for the one who supports marriage between a man and a woman. I vote for the one who supports the position that government promotes equality for all and the one who enforces law and order. I vote for someone who has shown that he can lead the country and not promote their own financial interest. I vote for someone who supports religious freedom and values the place of religious faith in the marketplace and who considers churches and Christians essential. I vote for the one who tells the truth, who exhibits courage and doesn't have a history of lying and waffling in their positions. There are those who are right now saying that I, as a pastor, should not be saying these things. For some reason, they think that I gave up my right to free speech when I entered into ministry. I'm still an American, and as a United States Army veteran, I love this country. I took an oath of loyalty to my nation, and as a citizen and one who loves America, I have an obligation to speak out for the well-being of this nation. I don't make these comments in my church services because my people come to be taught books of the uh, come to be taught books of the Bible. But I can tell you that my sentiments are squarely centered in biblical principles and anyone who knows me knows how I vote. 
Christian, your voice is heard by your vote. If you love this country, take the time to vote. If the one you vote for doesn't win, at least you did your part. In the end, we know it's God who raises up one, brings down the other. With that said, I encourage you to cast your vote, if you haven't already, and vote for the one that actually has character, not the one who claims to, but in reality, really doesn't. This is David Rosales, pastor of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.